just how cringe was last night's Saturday Night Live from home episode? Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Hello, everyone. I am Becca Random 42, the one, the only, the original, your favorite YouTube harpy. You know, like there's a whole lot of us out there. I don't think there are anymore. This is hilarious, though. So you're waiting. You're waiting. I'm getting ready. I'm snapping it in. Do you guys think it was well received? Do you think a lot of people tuned in? Well, I can guarantee a lot of people tuned in. The ratings soared. Strong ratings. It is, in fact, according to the TV ratings from TV Line, the second best right behind the Eddie Murphy episode, which people really tuned into the Eddie Murphy episode to see, you know, if he could bring back Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood or Buckwheat or any of his classic bits, you know, that would be deemed problematic by today's very, very simple people, right? Those type of people, the people who just want to get out there and complain about stuff just to feel superior to others. Oh, gee. I might be guilty of that from time to time. I'm not self-unaware completely. I know that I rip on stuff so I feel better about my own content because if I can't give some hope to somebody once in a while, what else can I do? This kind of hope is an antidote to loneliness. This kind of hope is an elixir to stagnation. When hope is in the room, curiosity and introspection of even the harshest realities can be interrogated. Okay, yeah, not relevant at all, but you know what? Smoke weed. Might be something to do with that. This this close up, this has to be Kate McKinnon. That's gotta be Kate. She's the only one I even recognize anymore, other than, you know, Miss White Male Rage Chick. White male rage, white male rage, white male rage. Wouldn't the perfect way to end that skit? have been Joaquin Phoenix walking out in full Joker makeup and basically reenacting the Robert De Niro scene. You know, you get what you deserve. No, 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 to, to her. Obviously, no, not for reals, fake completely. We don't mean any harm to the actress. Her, her career itself is enough of a joke. Clearly, clearly, she's doing enough harm to herself by having her, you know, prejudiced attitude towards white men. White male rage, white male rage. So we don't have to do it, obviously, and we don't ever contact these people. We just laugh and watch the spectacle, because that's what we do here, is watch the spectacle from a distance. Their ratings soared. Oh, you got you want to see a clip, don't you? I think you guys want to see some clips. Well, of course, they went for the lowest of all fruit. You know, the easiest, the quickest one to pick. The one that everybody can just gravitate to, because it's the quickest one. Making the orange man bad jokes. Uh-huh. And how many people... What laughed at them, probably all of them who were really, really big fans of this show because, you know, they say the same thing over and over again and they get a laugh. And of course, like many, many late night talk shows, they do pick at the lowest of hanging fruit, you know, the easiest one to make a joke of. The orange man, he's the easiest one. Meanwhile, millions of people are choosing to pick the lowest hanging of all fruits, the orange one, rather than making funny jokes. And that's what I quoted to Conan O'Brien, too, because he made another orange man. Here, here we go. Orange man bad joke. Put, put right there. It's exactly the same thing I said there, because it's pretty much the same joke over and over again. Not like I'm above making the same joke over and over again myself. You guys know that. Drop the taco. Get in the car. But that's more to amuse me. That's really more. To, oh, nothing to do with the. That's another video for another day. We're talking about this stuff, and this is hilarious to me. So, of course, they made fun of the orange man in the most awkward way possible. You had Tom Hanks come out and do his monologue. Oh, but this is fun. This is a fun one. This. Just their intro here. Woo! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Now, I do have to clarify, they did a skit where they are poking fun at sort of these group conference call sort of things, and I get it. What else are you really, really going to do other than, I don't know, get in front of a camera and entertain people like us on YouTube try and do for a few hours at a time during our live streams? Come over the live streams. They're a lot of fun. This is where we laugh at stuff like fried fish. Let's go eat some fried fish. Fried fish. Come on. Well, I mean, go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we love at cool stuff like that because what else can you do other than laugh at everything? Everything's so ridiculous. 
what cringelicious thing do Saturday Night Live cast members have to say? It's wonderful to see my beautiful castmates on this technological approach to trying to do a live show. So, and live from Zoom, it's we do live shows all the time on YouTube. We literally do live shows all the time, every day on YouTube. And these professional comedians can't get their crap together. And this is what they come up with. Just a bunch of people talking. They can't. No, get a little, do, do something. Get a little creative. Do something a little bit more unusual. Incorporate a Zoom cam, a jiggle cam, stuff like that. I have a jiggle cam on my live streams because you know what? My body, my choice. Yeah, why not? It's fun. That is the point of entertaining people. You want to be entertained. Entertainment is supposed to be fun and entertain me. And when I'm sitting there feeling awkward, like I'm in on a video conference call from a bunch of people I don't know, it's uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. And the problem with this is they pre-recorded a lot of this too. I think all of it was pre-recorded because there's no way in crap they would understand how to do it live just by going in with, you know, OBS or something and capturing their conference call via a display capture with desktop audio as their audio. I know they wanted it to be a little bit more professional, but what we got was really, really cringy awkwardness. And that's what this was. That's what a lot of this was. It's me, your old pal. And don't don't worry now, don't be afraid. This shaved head was just for a movie and my hair is growing back very slowly. All right, yeah, and listening to a late night monologue without the applause, applause, applause sign going off and without people, you know, participating and without the energy where you're feeding off of it, it's uncomfortable and awkward. It's really odd. I'm going to add a little anecdote here. I don't know if I'm going to cut this out, but... TV, being in a TV audience is much different than seeing the finished product with, especially even if it's a live TV show. If it's a live TV show, they know where to cut, what they can cut to, what they can do. They can add in a laugh track. They can add in all kinds of stuff. You know, much like I add in, you know, this. My spaceship sound effect or, you know, the Brie Larson sound effects and things like that. I can add in things at a button's push on a stream deck and they don't understand how to do that on their live show apparently anymore. They can do that in the studio. Sure, they can do that in the studio. I was at a live recording of, I want to say it was a Ripley's Believe It or Not or something like that. And it was for the Fremont Street experience in Las Vegas. There was a guy going to walk across that on stilts, very, very tall stilts up to pretty much where the zip line is now. I don't think they had a zip line back then when I, when they did this trick and you stand around forever and he barely takes like a little teeny step and you barely see anything happening. And then we're like, oh, did he do it? Did he do it? Oh yeah, we, we already got everything. He did it. Okay, but nobody saw him walk from one side of the street to the other. He just took a couple of steps. And then they cut to a couple of reactions in the audience, like a lady going, oh, and I looked because I'm like, okay, where am I? Where am I standing? Where is she? St where is this person that I keep seeing them cut to? She wasn't even there that day. They were cutting to something random from a bunch of people who weren't even there. Because I'm like, well, I was standing right there. I, you should see me. You should see the person I was with. No, you didn't see that. So this is how, you know, there's there's a bunch of tricks and magic and chicanery behind the scenes and a lot of this. And I think that's why a lot of people tuned in. Because they wanted to see if they were going to fall flat on their butts. And I think, from what I'm seeing, they might have... When you take away the studio audience and the energy, I mean, yeah, when you're in an audience, you're going to laugh at something that might not necessarily be funny because, you know, you're there to kind of let loose and enjoy everything and you don't want to really stand out like a, like a stick in the mud being, I don't want to laugh. You, you don't want to stand out like that if you're in a group of people and you know what, you're there to enjoy yourself. You're there to be entertained. I think a lot of people tune into Saturday Night Live though. Not so much to be entertained, but to see if it's going to be as cringe as the Jimmy Fallon's and Jimmy Kimmel's and James Corden's and all the other at-home celebrity stuff during the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. I am Corn Julio. I need TV for my bungalow. <laughs> At least that's my opinion of it. So you get some of the cringelicious stuff like his monologue. You get sub. Oh, he caught. He did a costume a change. Daily dose of your Vegemite. All right, enough of that. Well, we have a great show for you tonight. Now 
Oh, yeah. <sighs> yes, I am just showing you the bare minimum I can for 100% fair use because by, by copyright, I, I'm embarrassed and I'm uncomfortable. Oh, and of course, they went after the Orange Man bad stuff because, you know, low-hanging fruit. <laughs> some of the other names we workshopped. Oh, I would love to. Oh, this guy's that. baked. <laughs> okay, we had Chinese flu, then of course Hong Kong fluey, and then crouching tiger hidden symptoms. Oh, but when I say kung flu, I'm an ist. Oh, but it's okay if the orange man says it if it's Alec Baldwin, right? That's that's how they get away with it. That's why they like him to make fun. I don't know. I really don't understand. As an alien observer to your planet. Who knows at this point? The uh, the background noise of the people laughing, the women's voices laughing in the back of this little weekend update segment are very uncomfortable to listen to. Okay. <laughs> it is very much like hearing and sitting in on a conference call of your roommate while he's on a work call that you shouldn't quite be listening to. That's what it feels like. It's like, oh, this is this is nothing to do with me. I don't want. This is a little uncomfortable. I'm gonna go over here and not watch this. K, K, K. Oh, it gets better. There's even more cringe with Miss Kate McKinnon here, and you know she's probably the most recognizable. She's probably one of the more well liked cast members now. Keep in mind, I haven't watched Saturday Night Live in a very, 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 very long time. So when the whole Ghostbusters 2016 crap came out and all of those people came out of the blue, I was not aware of any of them other than it's a bunch of unfunny kind of cringe humor about really awkward people who all are trying to be the comic relief. And well, Kate McKinnon, more of the same. My screen is dark again. Darn it. No, don't, don't take your clothes off, Nan. No, 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 no. Don't take your clothes off. Oh, they, they think that's funny. They're parodying a conference call, a Skype call. And I guess when that's all you really have to work with, sure, you're going to go there for, you know, the lowest of the low hanging fruit. But wow, this, this episode, I'm going to have to go and find some little clips to meme because nothing can top the last most cringelicious Saturday Night Live clip that I've found. White male rage, white male rage, white male rage. At least not yet. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be some stuff in here. So I'm going to go and try and see if I can find a <clears throat> version of this somewhere to clip and obsess over and comb through as you know I do because that's part of my job. I just want to give you a first quick little thought on this. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I am MechaRandom42, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.